Yes, please. May God bless you as I greet you with the peace of the Most High. God bless you, church. Um, good to see all those that are with us already. We thank God for his keeping care. We thank God for his mercy that endures forever. We thank God for his uh, protective custody in spite of everything. There is a God in heaven and he, we belong to God and God belongs to us. So we wanna thank God for that. Uh, why don't we just take a moment uh, just, to, just to give God thanks. Uh, if you can just have the faith enough to just say, thank you, Lord, right where you are. As thank we, you, as, as we're, as that's right. I love when I hear the, the brothers speak up <laughs> um, as we're waiting for um, uh, those that are coming on, because usually they'll come on a few minutes after seven. So just why don't we, as the church, as the people of God, just for a moment, let's just give God thanks. That's all. Just sometimes it's just faith enough to say, thank you, Lord. And so right where you are, thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you. you Lord. If you want to unmute and say thank you, Lord, you can do that. But thank you want to just do Lord. it right where you are. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank, thank you, Lord you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of God, thank we thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lord God. Amen. Amen. We praise you, Father. We lift you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Exalt your holy name, Father God. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Bless you. We lift you up. We thank you, Father, that deliverance is in your hands. We give you praise. We glorify you. Thank you. Magnify you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Worthy, Lord. Worthy, O worthy, O Lord. Worthy, O Lord. Amen. 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 That sounds good. We'll do it again at the end of the class. Um, so we're going to begin our study. We thank God. Uh, I pray that as we uh, read the sacred scriptures tonight, that the anointing of God and the word of God will feed you right where you are, will encourage you, give you hope uh, as a body of people, lift you where you are, meet your needs right where you are. He speaks to you on an individual basis. He deals with you on an individual basis. So we thank God for that. I want to encourage you to put your prayer requests in the chat. We, 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 won't, we won't necessarily deal with it in extreme detail, but the purpose of putting it in the chat is like putting it in a prayer basket or putting it at the altar. It's just a, re a release of your faith. We'll let God deal with the details. But we'll pray over those requests in a general manner at the end of our class. And so just as a release of your faith, you can put in a prayer request. Sometimes all you need to do is just mention a name, mention an issue, or just put unspoken. God knows your need and he knows your details and he knows what you need and he knows the people you are praying for. And it's, very, it's so powerful because it's, remember, it's a heart issue. God is not waiting for us to read uh, a prayer request. Amen. There you go. God is not waiting for us to read a prayer request because the Bible says he already knows it. And he says, even before they call through the prophet uh, Isaiah, before they call, I will answer. So just put it in the chat, unspoken, spoken. Um, don't don't overdo the details just so we, you know, so you won't wear yourself out, but just trust God. You're releasing your faith and then we'll cover it. We'll cover it in a, in a general prayer at the end. And I'm expecting testimonies to come. Uh, we don't base, we don't base past negativity. We don't base the future on past neg negativity. We look to God and to his word. He is our hope. Amen. Dear father, I ask you now, to allow me to experience the moment of the teacher. I pray that it would not merely come from me, but through me. To wit, during the course of this sacred exercise, and even at the end of the sacred enterprise, you will challenge your people, you will charge your people, you will change your people, you will encourage your people, and you will water the seeds of our future. 
we continue as we began this, as we began tonight, Father, giving you thanks and praise, ascending, ascending your holy mountain with thanksgiving and appreciation and praise. As we spend time, as we commit ourselves to you in the study of the sacred page, move and minister, Lord. Pour out your compassion tonight with your miraculous divine intervention for these bodies, these souls, these spirits. Let your will be done tonight. Show the devil who's boss. Show circumstances who's really in control, oh God. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing it, Lord. And even as your people of Father now are putting their prayer requests in the chat, the altar, the prayer basket, thank you that even before we type these requests out, thank you, Lord, that you are already moving and ministering on their behalf. Because as we do it, we release our faith into your plan and your purpose and in your hands. We wanna praise you and we wanna thank you, oh God. Lord, if you don't do it, it's not gonna be done. So have your mighty right away tonight. Uh, even those who have brought to you physical concerns, financial concerns, emotional concerns, family concerns, housing, any and everything, Lord. We thank you that we have your invitation to bring it to you over and over and over again. Oh God, not that we're trying to we're trying to tell you that this, maybe you'll hear us this time. But you want us to remind you that we have placed it in your hands by constantly, bring it by constantly bringing it before you like the widow woman and the unjust judge, like the man at, at midnight who needed bread for his friend and the other many parables and lessons of the perseverance of prayer and trust and faith. So we commit everything to you, Lord. I commit myself to you. I pray that you would please use me as a channel of your blessings. I pray that you would lift us beyond ourselves. Lift us tonight, oh God, beyond the ordinary into the realm where your power is moving. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. I ask it in the name of the one that by whose stripes we are healed. I speak of Jesus, the very Christ. Amen. I want to call tonight's lesson or tonight's class, the time for deliverance, the time for deliverance. Uh, as much as I want to do these lessons in a certain way, I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit of God will pace us. That is, that he will be our guide and he will lead us and direct us and minister to us what we need uh, just for the knowledge of God, for the encouragement of the scriptures and to give us an overview of the whole Bible and each book of the Bible. Again, we'll spend a little more time in some of the lo longer uh, books of the Bible. But the main thing is, is not just the amount of information, it's the encouragement and the divine education we wanna receive from these lessons, that which will encourage us where we are, speak to us, help us, train us, train our ears, train our hearing to hear that other voice, that voice of God in the midst of so many other voices, God, do this for us. Uh, heal, heal the sick tonight. Heal those that are on the platform and heal those that we are praying for. We thank you in advance. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so tonight's class is uh, the time for deliverance. We're in the book of Exodus now. Uh, the time for deliverance. Amen. I like that. We shall. So tonight's class, the time for deliverance. I want you to remember that if you're writing notes, please get your Bible, get whatever you write with, because I want, I want you to get some of these principles. And remember, this is a scriptural journey, a scriptural journey, meaning we'll deal with scripture more than anything else. And why I like doing that is because it's the, it's the scriptures that God has obligated himself to confirm with 
signs following. So I want you to go back. We're in Exodus tonight, tonight's lesson, the time for deliverance, the time for deliverance. I want you to go back to the book of Genesis as we link these two books together, Genesis and Exodus. <clears throat> we'll go to the book of Genesis chapter 37, the book of Genesis chapter 37, the book of Genesis chapter 37. And I'm gonna be reading from the King James version of the Bible. If you can get your hands on a King, a new, rather King, New King James, I'll let you know when it's King James, but New King James, so we can be together. <clears throat> so <clears throat> sometimes you can just download it, or you may have a cop, a hard copy in your presence. But um, that's what I'm going to be reading from. Now let me say this before I read. So I want you to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 37. The book of Exodus, the book of Exodus opens up with the birth of Moses. The book of Exodus opens up with the birth of Moses. Genesis closes with the death of Joseph. Okay, just keep that in mind. Genesis closes with the death of Joseph. That's why I want to read a little because the lessons of Joseph are so powerful. So Genesis closes with the death of Joseph and Exodus opens with the birth of Moses. Okay, now, remember when we were dealing with Genesis, our, our key verse was Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in Genesis, God creates the universe. He creates the world. In the book of Exodus, he redeems a people. Okay, have that in your mind. In the book of Genesis, God creates. In the book of Exodus, God delivers or he redeems. Those are real key words there. He redeems a people for himself and really, both he does this for himself. In fact, Revelation chapter four, verse 11, Revelation chapter four, verse 11 says this, I'm quoting from King James. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Or for thy will or in your will, you created the heavens and the earth, and you are worthy of glory and honor and power. That means you are worthy of praise. Amen. All right. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 37, beginning with verse 5. So I want to have some continuity here. Beginning with verse 5, I'm going to read a little bit. Now, Joseph had a dream. Genesis chapter 37, beginning with verse five. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. Listen to the flow of the text. So he, he said to them, please hear this dream I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. I want you to take note, careful note here. Okay, catch this now. God gives each of his people a dream. He gives them an assignment. He gives us an assignment, a dream, a desire. He gives us a calling, a mandate. And often along the lines, he will reveal things to us. Sometimes directly, you know, from the word or in a literal dream or 
the word of the Lord will come to us, but he'll put something in our hearts, in our minds, in our spiritual DNA that is unique to us. But here's a warning. I was going to do my best to read through, but I want to just say this. Whenever God gives you something, whatever dream God has given you, we're not, we're not talking about age or gender. You are on planet Earth and God has put something in your life to fulfill. Don't get nervous about age. Don't get nervous about time. Don't get nervous about circumstance because when God issues a dream, when he mandates something for you, he will bring it to pass. As long as you keep things in God's hands and you stay before the Lord. But here's the warning. Don't go around sharing your dream with everybody. Don't go because when, when Joseph was giving this, telling this to his brothers, because the dream was real, it was from God, but he spoke it too soon. So it came out in arrogance. It sounded like arrogance. Yeah, I'm going to rule over you and I'm going to be in control over you and you're going to be my servant and I'm going to be the one who's in charge. I don't know if I would want to hear somebody saying that to me. So God will give you legitimate dreams. He will give you legitimate anointings and callings and mandate, gifts and talents. Here's the message. Let God bring it to pass before you go around boasting about it to everyone. Did you catch that? Just keep it in your heart and let God bring it, bring it to pass. God knows how to join the circumstances. God knows how to make the time right, to put things in their place. Remember that, because if God gives you the calling, if God gives you the mandate, if he gives you the dream, if he gives you the divine desire, he will bring it to pass and God will fix circumstances so they will work out. God causes, this is Romans 8, verse 28, God will cause all things to work together for your good. But remember this, don't jump ahead of God's timing. Don't jump ahead of God's timing. Don't start bragging about what God is going to do for you and in you and through you to everybody. Why? Because people can't always handle the dream that God has given you. And often they will become jealous. They will become envious. Often they will judge. They will say, well, wait a minute. I know so much about you. I know a little bit about your past and your history. I know your mistakes. I know your shortcomings. I know your personality. And you're going to tell me that God's going to do this? Nah, nah, nah. And you, they'll start getting envious. They'll start getting jealousy. And remember, sometimes that's just a result of people's insecurity. And so you got to be careful. God gives you a dream. Be careful who you share it with. In fact, I would suggest, even according to this text, just, just hide it. Hide it in your heart and let God bring it to pass. That's a good lesson. Amen. Let God do it. Don't jump ahead of the game because every time God would give a man or woman in the Old Testament, in the Bible, you know, a, a message and a dream. And if they tried to jump ahead of God's action, they produce the wrong thing. Let God do it. What, what I mean by this, if we, we can try to bring things to pass. Even our own healing, even our prayer requests, we can pray and try to bring it. The, we can try to bring it to pass ourselves, even when we're witnessing to somebody, even when we're trying to give someone advice or praying for someone or trying to minister to someone that we think maybe they're they're just hard and, and we're trying to reach them and we're trying to convince them in our own strength. Sometimes you just need to leave things in God's hands. Not sometimes, all the time. Am I speaking to anybody right now? Somebody ought to put that, there you go. That's just, did, did you know the ultimate sign of faith? Listen carefully. The ultimate sign of faith is telling God, Lord, if this is you, you bring it to pass, you confirm it, you make it so. Did you know God is big enough to back up his claim? Did you know God is big enough to fulfill what he proclaims? Did you know God is big enough to fulfill his promise? He's God. So if God has given you something, here's something else. If, 
if you have given something to God, I can, I can pick it up right now. We've, we've prayed about matters. We put it in God's hands. And because we don't see it come to pass right away, we take it out of his hands. Sometimes through worry, sometimes trying to handle matters in our own strength. Don't do that. Leave it in God's hands and let God bring it to pass. What do you do in the meantime? You tell God, Lord, I trust you. You tell God, Lord, thank you for my healing. Thank you for opening the door. Thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you for fixing things. Just and tell God, I trust you. That's a confession of your faith. I'm gonna tell you something that will go a long way because while the devil is, was, is, is endeavoring to make you worry and anxious about the matters you can't handle, Satan is trying to torment your mind and giving you all kinds of imaginations about how he'll give you the worst case scenarios in your mind. Leave it in God's hands and tell God this is in your hands because God, if this is you, you will confirm it and you will bring it to pass. Don't be telling everybody. Amen. I didn't mean to go along, along, along with that, but we needed that. Now I'm going to read without stopping. All right. Verse five for those, because I see a lot of people just now coming on. We're in Genesis chapter 37 and in beginning with verse five, listen to the flow of the text. Listen to the lessons that's communicated, and I'm reading from New King James. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. They hated him because of his dream. So he said to them, please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood up right. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. They thought it was arrogance. Then he dreamed still another dream. Joseph, you ought to be being quiet right now. But he spoke a little out of season. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. This is symbolic of, of nations. So he told it to his father and his brothers. So he told it to his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. So notice they hated him. They envied him. That is, they were jealous of it. You know, they, they kind of believe, they kind of believe it was coming to pass. But why are you, they kind of believe that it was a dream from God. But why are you telling this to us now? See, his father kept the matter in his mind. Then verse 12 says this, then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, that's Jacob, said to Joseph, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, here I am. Then he said to him, please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent them out of the valley of Hebron, of Hebron or Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, listen, and there he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him saying, what are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, they have departed from here. But I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, listen, listen carefully. They conspired against him to kill him. Did you hear what I'm saying? Listen, there, there are dream killers around. There are dream stealers around. 
That's why you gotta be, don't be so quick to share your dream and your vision. You telling it is not gonna make it true if it is true. And you telling it is not gonna make it come to pass any faster. You have to use wisdom. And the Bible says in James, be slow to speak and swift to hear. That's a wise woman, that's a wise man. And so they, they conspired against him to kill him. Verse 19 said, then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. See, that's how people will label you. If you have something positive that God has given you and you share it too soon, they're gonna think, oh man, what, what does she think she's gonna do? What, what does he think he's gonna do? Come there and remember the lesson tonight is the time for deliverance. The key word is time. Come therefore, verse 20, come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. Speaking about their own brother. And we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of this, of his dreams. My, my, my. But Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic. This is what we call the coat of many colors. Remember, coat of many colors means favor. It means he was the favorite of the father. It means favor. Keep that in your mind. It means favor, Sister JS, favor. And favor does have a price tag to it, but it also has a timing to it. And I tell you, there's some tests and trials that come when the favor of God is upon you. But I tell you that the favor of God will always win beyond tests and trials. What do I mean by that? There is a time for deliverance. So, so the tunic, so it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic. See, even though that physical coat was stripped off of him, you couldn't strip the favor of God off of him because that came from God. And listen, sister, listen, brother, nobody can strip from you what God has clothed you with. Oh yeah, circumstances will come and they seem for the moment to deprive you of peace to deprive you of physical uh, 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 things, uh, deprive you of health, deprive you of, 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 of finances, momentary setbacks. Even when you experience the loss of loved ones or setbacks, don't you know that a setback to God is not a setback? To God, a setback is a setup because he calls, causes all things to work together for our good. So, no, so whatever setback you may be experiencing, whatever cutback you may be experiencing, and no matter how many times you hear the devil say to you, get back and stay back. Nah, 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 nah. The time of deliverance is at hand. The time of deliverance is at hand. So it came to pass, I wanna read it again. They stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors. And I, I like that because many colors means you, 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 can't, um, you, you can't exhaust the many colors of God's favor. There's always another color, colors that you've never even seen. And favor will bring you to the place of God's abundance and the place of God's purpose. Then verse 24, verse 24, then they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. You may have some thirsty times. Let me give you a word tonight in this 
in this class, the time of deliverance is at hand. The time of deliverance will come. That's the ninth class. Verse 25, and they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked. And there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, what profit is there? See, not only are they jealous of him, they don't care whether he lives or dies. Now they want to make a profit from his life. What from their jealousy of him, their envy? What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. In other words, sell him into slavery. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brothers listen. And finally, then Midianite, then Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Now, they, they, now, now the story goes, here's, here's the, again the lesson, because this lesson bears repeating. Here's the story. After they sold him into slavery, remember, here's the three Ps you want to look at. And you can read this on your own time from, from uh, uh, Genesis chapter 37 and on. Just continue to read. But Joseph went from the pit to the prison. And God, God gave Joseph a gift to interpret dreams in that prison. He went from the pit to the prison, to Pharaoh's chamber. And the vision, the dreams and the visions that Joseph had was that he would be second in command to the Pharaoh. And he would be a leader, not just over his brothers, not in a sense of slavery, bow down to my feet, because that's what it sounded like. And I'm just gonna dominate you. No, he was going to be a political leader, a prophetic leader, second into the highest, second to the highest in command in that place. And that's what he saw. Joseph didn't fully understand the dream, but he shared the dream too quickly. So this is the three Ps that God has for you. From the pit to the prison and then to the palace. And God has a palace for each and every one of you. Stop th thinking about your age or the clock or the time or your circumstances. Those God is not limited by that. OK, now God always has a word for you. So this is very, very important. I'm again to Dyke's class, the time of deliverance. So now we read that main story about how he was sold uh, into slavery. That's the pit. And then later on, he was arrested because he ended up in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife lied on him and said he tried to attack her and, you know, tried to take advantage of her. And he ran. He ran from that temptation so fast that his coat was left in Potiphar's wife's hand and she was angry. So she lied on him. So then he was arrested and put in prison. And that was it. It was like, my God, but Joseph never gave up. Joseph, Joseph never, ever, ever, ever gave up. He was faithful to God. He was faithful to God. He kept on worshiping sister Grace. He kept on worshiping Valerie. He kept on giving God thanks no matter how hard it was, even when it felt like God had forsaken him. And God gave him a divine gift. God gave him a supernatural anointing. God gave him the ability to interpret dreams. And then Pharaoh had a dream. Uh, the people in prison, the leaders in prison, prison guards found out Joseph had that gift. And then when Pharaoh had a dream and forgot about it, the, 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 the prison guards heard about Pharaoh's dream and knew that Joseph had a gift to, to interpret Pharaoh's dream. So Joseph's divine gift made room for him 
in the, to, in the presence of the highest in command, that's powerful. God will take you from the pit to the prison. He's there with you the whole time because even when he was in the prison, the Bible said God made everyone to know that God was with Joseph. Everyone knew that God was with Joseph. And then before, and then he was placed second in command. Now I want you to go very quickly to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Remember our lessons, brief lessons from each book of the Bible. And we're just picking out lessons. This is a journey. So it's going to be exciting. It's not going to necessarily be like A, B, C, D, E, but it will be encouraging. It will deal with scriptures. They'll feed you. This is going to be exciting. It's going to be an adventure. We dealt with Genesis. Now we're in, ex, uh, in, in Exodus. We'll take key words. We'll deal longer with other books. Hey, it's just going to go on and on and on. You'll be encouraged by it. So now remember a scriptural journey. You compare scripture with scripture. So let's go to Psalm 105. Psalm 105, again, my translation is the New King James. Now listen carefully. What is our class tonight? The time for deliverance. The time for for deliverance. And of course, deliverance can mean many things. Deliverance can mean out of your sickness, out of your financial straits, out of poverty, out of your emotional bondage, deliverance from the, being bound up with the shackles of the past, deliverance from the time when it seems like none of your prayers are coming to pass, deliverance from family issues, deliverance from people's opinions, deliverance from, from fear or depression, the list goes on and on and on. Deliverance means to be taken from one place and put into another. And remember, God is the God of deliverance. If we don't get too much further in here. The key word to the book of Exodus is a way out. The key word to the book of Exodus is deliverance. Now we go to Psalm 105, and I want to read from verse 19. This is class, so you have to have your notebook and you have to have your pen, your pencil, paper, or whatever you take notes with, and let's hang out together and be encouraged by the scriptures. Verse 19 says, listen to this, Psalm 105, verse 19, until the time, underline it, underline that, until the time, get yourself a new King James so we can read, we can read together, or if you don't, then you can hear me and then read what you have. Until the time, until the time, until the time that his word, that's God's word now, this was the dream, this was the promise gave Joseph, this was the promise that God gave to Joseph. Until the time that his word came to pass, listen carefully, the word of the Lord tested him, tried him, King James says. And another way to say this proved him. Why is that? Because every true word from God will have a time when it is in its incubation period. That's a word for you, Sister V, because God gave you words years ago that you haven't seen come, uh, come to pass. Amen? And sometimes people think we're foolish. You know, that's outlandish. But what are you talking about? Just hold on a little while. Come on, Sister J. You know exactly what I'm talking about. God gives us words. Come on, Sister B. God gives us words about your family, about your children, about your offspring. I've lost so much. Listen, God will restore more to you than you can possibly lose. That's when, see, because when God restores, that's grace. When God restores, he always gives you more than you lost. How can that be, minister? Listen, with God, all things are possible. We, we ought to just be like Mary. When the word of the Lord came to her and said, you're going to have a child without a man, she, she pondered these things. You know, she struggled to see how is this going to come to pass? She didn't say no. She, she just said, how is this going to happen? Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord the word of the Lord tested him. And what does that mean? Often, when God gives you a promise 
or even the promise in the word of God to you, or a prophetic promise. What I mean by prophetic promise, a rhema, that means the promise that is specific and unique to your life, your calling, your gift, your mandate, your purpose on this planet Earth. There are times when you will go through seasons that are the very opposite. They are the exact opposite of what God has promised you. And I want to say this, listen carefully. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. There is a, a to everything, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, King James, to everything, listen carefully, to everything. There is a season to everything. There is, is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Let me quote it again. To everything, to everything. How many things? Everything. Remember Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. God causes all things to work together for our good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Every trace of pain on this platform, every trace of physical pain on this platform, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and I command it to depart your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Speak, Holy Ghost, for your servant hears. In Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes, and just, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. You ought to just say, I believe I receive. Take your healing right now. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Can I tell you, sister? Can I tell you, brother? You are under heaven. You are under heaven. So there is a time to every season. There is a, for everything rather, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Did you get it? Things have seasons, purposes have times. What is purpose? The reason something exists. Purpose, the reason something exists. What does that mean? Let me, let me listen very carefully to me tonight. God, or, God doesn't just scatter out events. He doesn't just fling things together. God works with purpose in mind. There is a reason, a purpose for your life. And though we have heard that, we may have heard that before, you need to hear that over and over again because the devil will lie to you and let the devil will lie to us. And he'll say, look how time, look how, look how fast time is going. Well, did you know that God is in charge of time? What did I say? God is in charge of time. Sometimes we interchange those statements about, well, God is in control. What we mean by God is in control is that God is ultimately in charge because he allows certain things to take place. We can't say that God is the author of confusion. So if confusion is around you right now, don't say that God authored that. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of chaos, but guess what? God will sometimes allow it. But just like in the book of Genesis with one word from God, he will call order out of chaos. He will call order out of confusion with one word by saying, let there be. You better let God speak to you. You better let the word of the Lord go ahead and try you because no matter how hot, no matter how hard, no matter how trying, no matter how tragic, no matter how um, discouraging the situations are, the end is going to be better than the beginning. The result of the equation is going to be better than the numbers that are worked, whether they're added or, or subtracted or multiplied or divided. The result is in God's hands. Trust him tonight. Trust him tonight. Trust God. He will work it out. And you say, well, there's no way to resurrect this because I've lost so much. Well, let me tell you something. You don't know how God does things. That's what Mary and Martha said. He said, what is Lazarus to me? He called Lazarus death. Lazarus is death. He just said he's, he's, he's just sleeping. 
His disciples couldn't understand that. Well, if he's sleeping, we'll just go wake him up. Come on, get real, Jesus. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm God. Did I not say to you, I am the resurrection and the life? Did I not say to you that if you believe me, you would see the glory of God? The, the problem is we're trying to figure it out while we're supposed to be trusting God to work it out. Faith doesn't mean you got to figure it out. Faith doesn't mean that you understand what your natural mind, how God is going to do what he's going to do. Don't you know time is in his hands? You think it's late, but God will restore to you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locusts have eaten. The devil will say, well, you missed these opportunities and you brought this on your you brought this on yourself. So you better forget about the time that has passed. Let me tell you something. Just like God stopped the sun for Joshua so his people could win a battle, God will rewind time, not literally in the sense of, okay, you know, to, uh, uh, to, to you, the seconds and the hours and the days are going on. But I'll tell you that God will empower you to accomplish more in one moment with God's divine favor upon you that you could do in a lifetime in your own strength. I'm going to say that again. God will do more in a moment for you than you could do in your entire lifetime. Favor is coming to you, sister, for that open door. Favor is coming to you, sister, for that open door, for that job, for that healing, for the thing you are believing God for. And though your dreams have been shattered because so many dream killers are all around us, God can resurrect the dream. He'll make the door open. He'll, he'll, he'll give you favor with those who are the highest in power. God is not going to let the devil or your circumstances, or the doctor's report, or your loss have the last word. Uh-uh. He's not going to let them, uh, he's not going to let those things outdo what God can do and outdo what God promised to do. If you believe me, did I not say you would see the glory of God? I am the resurrection and the life. So says the Lord. In other words, it doesn't matter how many dead things are around. I'll speak to it and make it come alive again. Glory to God. So, so Psalm 105 and verse 19, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him, meaning Joseph. Verse 20, the king sent and released him out of prison. The ruler of the people let him go free. Did you hear the word of the Lord? Verse, verse, verse 21, he made him Lord of his house. Don't that sound like Joseph's dream coming to pass? And ruler of all his possessions. Doesn't that sound like uh, Joseph's dream coming to pass? To bind his princes at his pleasure and, to, and teach his elders wisdom. In other words, God will touch your mind and your heart and make you wiser than the wisest wise ones. Amen. Because remember, God's foolishness is wiser than men. So that's why it's good to get linked up with the wisdom of God. And I want you to I just listen, listen carefully. Remember, well, I can't say remember that the story goes. But when God blesses you, when God touches you, when God gives you favor, when God opens, opens that door for you, when God promotes you, even... Uh, even in the midst of those who are jealous of you and envious of you. That's not a time for us to get arrogant. That's a time for, for to remain humble and say, this is, this is in your hands, God. And even when we can say, you know what? You did this to me. Now I'm going to pay you back. No, 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 no. The Bible said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. <laughs> and let me tell you something. When God pays back, believe me, he does it best. It's we don't render evil for evil. Just leave it in God's hands. Pray for your enemy. I know sometimes you have to grit and bite your tongue and swallow, but God will fix it. And the very ones that spoke against you, the very ones that talked about you, the very ones that were jealous of you, the very ones that tried to bring you down will come knocking on your door and say, will you pray for me? They'll come apologizing and all that kind of stuff because we, we're not coming to God as though we have it all together, even when God blesses us, not me. Not me. That's why my testimony is always, when I look back over my shoulder, the only thing I will take credit for are mistakes. If there's anything worthwhile in my life, it's the grace of God. It's the mercy of God. 
that's just me because I know me and nobody knows each of us like we know ourselves except God. <laughs> Sometimes the question becomes, I, I know one author said, would, would you have chosen you? <laughs> but it doesn't matter because God didn't ask us. Not only did God not ask anybody permission to choose us, but God didn't even ask us. He didn't say, Burley, can I choose you? Nah, I know what I'm getting a hold of. And, and all of us are works in progress for he who began a good work in us will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. I don't care who you are, or where you are. The worst is in the best of us and the best is in the worst of us. It's all about God's grace. It's all about God's mercy. And let me tell you something, God's gonna have the last word and the last action. And especially in times like these, we need to trust God because God will cause you to rise like an island out of the sea. Verse 21, he made him Lord of Psalm 105. He made him Lord of his house and ruler of his all of his possessions to bind his pr princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt and, jo and Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham. Now listen carefully, here's the promise, here's the promise. Verse 24 of, of Psalm 105, he increased his people greatly. See, that's what Joseph means. It means increase. It means increase. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. God is going to make you stronger than your enemies. And verse 25, he turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. But let, let me, I don't want to end on verse 25. I want to end on verse 24. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Okay? So the word of the Lord just tested, tested Joseph. So the, the message tonight, the class tonight, is a time for deliverance. God has your time in his hands. Listen, I again... I have this planned out. I didn't get to what I wanted to get to, but we're already out of time. Let me le let me leave you with this verse because we'll just pick up from here next week. I, I, I don't want to, you know, I want to say, Lord, I got this plan. I got this plan. No, Lord, the plans are in your hands. I want you to feed your people. Read Psalm 31 and verse 15. That's our last verse tonight. Psalm 31 and verse 15. If you put all these uh, verses together, and the introduction about G Genesis beginning or ending with uh, the death of Joseph, Exodus beginning with the birth, uh, with Genesis ending with the death of Joseph, Exodus opening with the birth of Moses. Moses was a deliverer. The key word for, for Exodus is deliverance. So we got to continue with this next week. This is one of the larger books, but this is this is full of fruit. Psalm 31 and verse 15. Listen to the word. My times, David is speaking. My times are in your hand. That should be our confession. You ought to tell God that. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies. Again, enemies can be your trial, your tribulation, your sickness, your disease, poverty, financial problems, family issues, whatever the case may be. Because the word of the Lord will have a testing time, an incubation period before it comes to pass. And there are lots of prom prophetic promises hanging over your head. And from those that persecute, and from those who persecute me, and then he says in verse 16, as a prayer, make your face shine upon me, that's favor, your servant. Make your face shine upon your servant, save me for your mercy's sake. And that is the time of deliverance. We'll continue with this thought. We'll give it another uh, title uh, so we can have different titles. We'll give it another title next week. But these scriptures speak for themselves. And so I pray that there was some encouragement here to you tonight. Your time is coming, your time of deliverance. It means the word of the Lord coming to pass, bringing you to a place. Listen, when we pray, we must believe that God works miracles because um, every answer to prayer is a miracle. So as we, as we place these prayer requests in God's hands tonight, every, sometimes I look at this time and it looks like I have like five minutes, uh, five, five minutes left 
we're already out of time. So we'll take we'll take this all of these prayer requests. And Father, you see all these requests uh, uh, for do, uh, for doors open up uh, for doors opening for employment um, uh, for Hubert uh, mind issues, Father God, nieces and nephews with parents for separation. Um, we're praying for CCB. Uh, Lord, all the other requests that are in the chat, in our minds, those that we put in there, those that are unspoken, those, those that are not spoken right now, I, I put myself in agreement. I set myself in agreement with each prayer request, spoken and unspoken, oh God. And those that are even speaking now to you, two will put 10,000 to flight, one will chase 1,000, two will put 10,000 to flight. If two or of two or more of you agree on earth is touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. So I set myself in agreement with every prayer request tonight. Just give it to God right now. Throw it as a sign of faith. Give it to God. Here, Lord, this is my concern. This is my burden. This is my prayer request. Throw it at the altar. I set myself in agreement with you that in God's time, his timing and his perfect way of dealing with things, it will come to pass because he said, don't worry about anything but pray about everything. The peace of God will come upon you and what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So let's say all together, I believe I receive my answer. I believe I receive the blessing. I believe I receive every need met. I believe I receive my healing. Lord, everything is in your hands. My times are in your hands. So thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me pray God's benediction over your life. I claim the promises of Psalm 91 over each and every one of you, that he will protect your person and your property and your family from all trouble, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, even to keep your feet from stumbling. Take your healing and deliverance now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide upon you the people of God, henceforth, now and forevermore, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for a chest issue again. Put your hand on your chest. Lord, I ask you to touch any chest issue, any lung issue, any pain in the chest, any sharp pains in that chest. I speak Jesus' name. Be healed now, Lord. Honor it to be so, Father. Amen and amen. I like to be a good steward of my time. I'm two minutes past my time. But we can unmute if you got something out of this tonight, just so we can hear each other's voice. Say hallelujah, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. God bless you. God, thank God, thank God. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Hold on. Amen. So we say praise the Lord. Um, please come back next week. We'll give more time to prayer. Um, yeah, amen. bring those, bring those who need healing, those who need physical healing amen. on the platform. We're getting yeah, some hallelujah. powerful testimonies of physical healing mm -hmm. of all kinds of things. So just come on in mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll meet you here next week. Do your homework, go over these verses mm -hmm. and God is good. God bless your ministries. God bless pastor mm -hmm. Cooper and all the teachers and, and leaders and feeders and singers. Mm -hmm. The Lord bless you is our prayer. God bless you, deaconesses and deaconesses, deacons and deaconesses. God, God bless, bless you. you me, Amen. Oh, God bless, bless you. I love you. that voice. I know who you are. Bless you. God bless you. I love you. I know who you are. Oh, bless you. God bless you.